it's going to be very tempting to use AI as a weapon. It's going to be very tempting. In fact, it will be used as a weapon. So the the on, the the on ramp to serious AI. The danger is going to be more humans using it against each other. I think most likely that'll be the danger. These are not. Uh, things that I think that I wish would happen. These are things, simply things that I think probably will happen. Humanity really is not evolved to think of existential threats in general. We've evolved to think about things that are very close to us, near term, to, to be upset with other humans, and, and not, not to really to think about things that could destroy humanity as a whole. But then in recent decades, just really in the last century, we had n nuclear bombs, which are, could potentially destroy civilization, obviously. Uh, we have AI, which could destroy civilization. Uh, we have global warming, which could destroy civilization, or, or at least severely disrupt civilization. How could AI mm -hmm. destroy civilization? You know, it would be something in the same way that humans destroyed the habitat of primates. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be destroyed, but we might be relegated to a small corner of the world. When Homo sapiens became much smarter than other primates, I pushed all the other ones into small habitats. They were just in the way. Over time, I think we'll probably see a closer merger of biological intelligence and digital intelligence. And it's mostly about the, the bandwidth, the speed of the connection between your brain and your digital extension of yourself. Couldn't AI, even in this moment, just with the technology that we have before us, be used in some fairly destructive ways? You could make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the Face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, ex and explode. And the biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. And they think they're smarter than they actually are. Um, in general, we are all much less smart, dumber than we think we are. This tends to plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. I'm really quite close to I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. It's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows, and the rate of improvement is exponential. And you can see this in things like AlphaGo, which went from, in the span of maybe six to nine months, it went from being unable to beat even a reasonably good Go player, to then beating the European world champion who was ranked 600, then beating Lisa Dole 4-5, who had been world champion for many years, then beating the current world champion, then beating everyone while playing simultaneously. Then there was Alpha Zero, uh, which crushed Alpha Go 100 to zero. And Alpha Zero just learned by playing itself, and it, it can play basically any game that you put the rules in for. Whatever rules you give it, just, it literally read the rules, play the game, and be superhuman for any game. The way in which a regulation is put in place is slow and linear, and we are facing an exponential threat. If you have a linear response to an expo exponential threat, it's quite likely the exponential threat will win. That, in a nutshell, is the issue. Like the, normally, the way that regulations work is very slow, very slow indeed. Usually, it'll be something, some new technology, it will cause damage or death. There will be an outcry. There will be an investigation. Years will pass. There will be some sort of insight committee. There will be rulemaking, then there will be oversight, eventually regulations. This all takes many years. This is the normal course of things. This time frame is not relevant to AI. You can't take 10 years from the point at which it's dangerous. It's too late. Any group of people, like, like a, a company is essentially a, a cybernetic collective of people and machines. That's what a company is. And then, there's different levels of complexity in the way these companies are formed. And then there are sort of, is there sort of like a collective AI in Google search, you know, the, 
where we're all sort of plugged in as like, like nodes on the network, like leaves on a big tree, and we're all feeding this network with our questions and answers. We're all collectively programming the AI, and Google plus the, all the humans that connect to it are one giant cybernetic collective. This is also true of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these social networks. They're giant cybernetic collectives. It feels like we are the biological bootloader for AI, effectively. We are building it. And then we're building progressively greater intelligence. And the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. But the, the AI is informed, strangely, by the human limbic system. It, it is, in large part, our id writ large. There's all, all the things that we like and hate and fear. They're all there on the internet. They're a projection of our limbic system. AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda. Uh, that would not seem like propaganda. So these are deep fakes. Yeah, influence the direction of society, influence elections, artificial intelligence. Just hones the message, hones the message, check, looks, at the feed, looks at the feedback, makes this message slightly better. Within milliseconds, it, could, it can adapt its message and, and shift and react to news. And, and there's so many uh, social media accounts out there that are not people. Like, how, how, do you, how do you know it's a person, not a person? There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. And I think some kind of a universal basic income is going to be necessary. The output of goods and services will be extremely high. So with automation, there will come abundance. Almost everything will get very cheap. The harder challenge, much harder challenge, is how do people then have meaning? Like, a lot of people, they derive their meaning from their employment. So if you don't have, if, if you're not needed, if there's not a need for your labor, how do you, how, what's the meaning? Do you, do you have meaning? Do you feel useless? That's a much harder problem to deal with. Um, and then how do we ensure that the future is going to be the future that we want, that we still like? No, I mean, I do think that there's a potential path here, which is having some sort of uh, merger with biological intelligence and machine intelligence. To some degree, we are already a cyborg. The digital tools that you have, your phone, your computer, the applications that you have, like the fact that you can ask a question and instantly get an answer uh, from Google or you know, from other things. And so you already have a digital tertiary layer. I say tertiary because you can think of the limbic system, kind of the, the animal brain or the primal brain, and then the cortex, kind of the thinking and planning part of the brain, and then your digital self as a third layer. So you already have that. And, and it's like if somebody dies, their digital ghost is still around. You know, all of their emails and their, the pictures that they posted and their social media, that still lives even if they physically died. And it's mostly about the, the bandwidth the speed of the connection between your brain and your digital extension of yourself. We used to have like keyboards that we'd use a lot. Now we do most of our input through our thumbs on a phone. That's just very slow. A computer can communicate at a trillion bits per second, but your thumb can maybe do 10 bits per second or 100 if you're being generous. So some ha high bandwidth interface to the brain I think will be something that helps achieve a symbiosis between human and machine intelligence and maybe solves the control problem and the usefulness problem. If you can't beat it, join it. Narrow AI, like vehicle autonomy, it's narrowly trying to achieve a certain function. Narrow AI is not a species level risk, but deep artificial intelligence or artificial general intelligence where you could have AI that is much smarter than the smartest human on Earth. This, I think, is a dangerous situation. If, if humanity collectively decides that creating digital superintelligence is the right move, then we should do so very, very carefully. Very, very carefully.
This is the most important thing that we could possibly do.